can God possibly use someone like me? If you've ever wondered that, God can use a donkey and a pagan prophet? He could definitely use you. Hi, I'm Josh. Welcome to Honestly Radio. Sometimes our view of God can be tragically small. We limit him to our own natural abilities or lack of talents or point to our weird, messed up past. And whether we've said it out loud, our lives can lead with a defeated mantra. God could never use someone like me to do something great for him. And that is a lie straight from Satan himself. It's the work of the enemy to pull focus away from an infinite God and place it on ourselves. The Bible is full of ordinary people who were enabled and empowered to carry out the purpose of an almighty God. They were far from perfect. Their past was terrible, and some of them were actually pagans. So if Jesus can speak through them and use them for his glorious purpose, he can definitely use someone like you or me. We worship and serve a God that can do anything. I want us to look at the story of a scoundrel and his donkey found in Numbers chapter 23. And no, this is not the story of Shrek, though the donkey can talk in this story too, but probably didn't sound like Eddie Murphy. The scoundrel was a pagan prophet hired to curse the nation of Israel in exchange for cash, and he was happy to do it until he was stopped by the Lord. Balaam was not seeking God, but God found him and told him, you may go speak to the king who hired you, but only say what I tell you. What followed was a remarkable exchange between a man and his donkey. Balaam was so ready to get paid, he ignored the Lord and started down the road. God placed a fierce angel in his path, which Balaam couldn't see, but the donkey was very aware of. So the donkey tries to run away, go around it, and just flat out refuse to move. And after a wild fight between man and beast, God opened up the mouth of the donkey and gave it words to speak, saving that pagan's life. So let's pause there a moment and recognize, if God can use a donkey to save someone's life, what could he do through you? Furthermore, if the Lord is able to open an animal's mouth to speak, why on earth should you worry about what you're going to say or do? You are far more capable and definitely more receptive to the Holy Spirit. What kind of twisted arrogance is it to think that God couldn't possibly use someone like me? If Jesus Christ can empower and equip a donkey to do his will, then you are beyond blessed to fulfill any divine purpose that God calls you to do. It's time to stop making up excuses. It's time to stop believing the same old tired lie and finally say Yes, I am willing. Send me. Show me the way to go. Tell me what you would have me to do. Open your heart and mind and pray. Jesus, I know that if you've called me to do it, you will empower and equip me for the mission. All of us who are trying our best to carry out God's will have been in the same place. And most of us will tell you, if God can use me, he can use anybody. He is that great and glorious. It's not about what I can do. It's all about what Jesus can do through us. If he can use a donkey, he can use you. So finally, Balaam's eyes are open to what God is doing. He stops fighting with his pack animal and goes to meet the king, a king who was expecting Balaam, an evil false prophet, to curse God's chosen people. But God had other plans. Numbers chapter 23, verse 5 says, The Lord gave Balaam a message for King Balak. Come, he said, curse Jacob for me. Come and announce Israel's doom. But how can I curse those whom God has not cursed? How can I condemn those who the Lord has not condemned? The King Balak demanded of Balaam, What have you done to me? I brought you to curse my enemies. Instead, you have blessed them. But Balaam replied, I will speak only the message that the Lord puts in my mouth. When I read that, it just impacted me in a profound way. This false prophet recognizes the supreme power of God to do whatever he wants to do. How much more should that truth resonate in our hearts and minds? That our God, who made the heavens and the earth, can open our mouth to share his message. How many times have we said, God, I can't, 
instead of, God, place your message in my heart, my mind, and my mouth. You are the ruler of all. You can do anything. I know you can use me to speak your truth. This should be a humbling moment for all of us, a moment to reflect on just how truly magnificent our God is, and perhaps a moment to ask forgiveness for ever pretending or believing that he was too small or ineffective to move in our lives. Jesus, open our eyes. Help us to grasp even just the glimpse of your greatness and allow it to forever change and empower us to move forward in faith and obedience. The king tried again to get Balaam to curse Israel, but he wouldn't do it. Instead, he said this, God is not a man, so he does not lie. He is not human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? Listen, I received a command to bless. God has blessed and I cannot reverse it. No misfortune is in his plan for Jacob. No trouble is in store for Israel. For the Lord their God is with them. He has been proclaimed their king. When God is present in our lives, when we truly see him, it changes everything. This false prophet had one thing on his mind, money, treasure, a paycheck. But when God got a hold of him, he knew in this moment that he could only say what God told him to. Numbers chapter 24, verse 12. Even if Balak were to give me his palace filled with silver and gold, I would be powerless to do anything against the will of the Lord. I told you that I could say only what the Lord says. God can use anybody anytime, anywhere. No one is out of reach or too far gone. Balaam wasn't just a bad guy. He was actively working with the enemy. And still, he could be used by God. What does that say about God's ability to work through you? What have you been telling God no about for far too long? What have you been doubting in your own ability to do for Jesus? It's time to say yes. God is giving you everything you could possibly need to fulfill his purpose for your life. There is no more room for excuses. If you refuse now, it's not because you don't have the ability, you're not willing to trust him. It's time to deal with that, to pray and confess and allow Christ to heal, lead, and direct your life. I pray that you do. I want to close the show with this last remarkable bit from Balaam. In the midst of speaking about Israel, God granted him a glimpse of the coming Messiah, Jesus. It's such an incredible moment and a reminder that Jesus reveals himself to everybody, sinner and saint, pagan and pastor. We hear this divine message from the lips of the pagan prophet in verse 15. The message of one who hears the words of God, who has knowledge from the Most High, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who bows down with eyes wide open. I see him, but not here and now. I perceive him, but far in the distant future. A star will rise from Jacob. A scepter will emerge from Israel. The light of the world, Jesus Christ, was coming to make everything possible. Let's recognize the incredible gift that was purchased with his sacrifice and move forward right now in faith and obedience. Hey, I just want to take a moment and say thank you for joining us on the podcast. I want to encourage you to read Numbers chapter 23 and 24 on your own. Spend time in prayer and reflection. We'd love to connect with you. Follow Honestly Radio on Facebook or Instagram. There you'll find all the links to all the podcast apps we're on where you can download the show for free. I also want to encourage you to connect daily with God in prayer, in your Bible, and through attendance and service at a local church. Allow Christ to begin building your faith. Thank you for joining us on Honestly Radio. Remember, live honestly, be blessed. We'll see you next time.